Hello, everyone. Um, Pete Uliberry. Uh, I wanted to share a couple things with you about things that have been on my mind in understanding swing mechanics, uh, what drives the nose of the disc down. Um, one of the key things that have been on my mind for a while about it is understanding that the last point of contact on the disc will dictate nose angle. So if we have a heavy pressure downwards on the disc at the release point, then we're going to cause the disc nose to go up. And if we have a pressure going upwards at the release point, then we're going to drive the nose down. This is being discovered by a few people out there. And here is the reason why. The disc is a gyroscope uh, for a right-handed player. Um, we impart a clockwise spin on the disc. Well, because it's a gyroscope, the last point of contact, let's say we push down on this. This everybody knows how to throw an air bounce, or at least the old Frisbee guys do. You push your press, thumb pressure down at the release point, and what happens is 90 degrees away. So like, let's look at it right here. Right here is, let's go pick an arrow. Right there is the release point. If I rotate my wrist inwards, so my thumb puts pressure down, then the effect of that is going to influence 90 degrees away which is right here. So if I rotate my thumb down, it's a gyroscope 90 degrees away on the direction of rotation is where the effect is gonna take place. And that's going to push the tail of the disc down. Well, the cool thing is, is if we push the tail of the disc down, then what we're gonna find is that the nose of the disc will go up. Now, on the opposite side of that, if at the release point, we have our hand rotating outwards, or at least putting pressure outwards so that our fingers are, are torquing the disc over, then what we're gonna find is that we're going to be putting an upward pressure on the right wing of the disc. That effect is gonna take place 90 degrees away, which means the tail of the disc is going to go up. And if the tail of the wing goes up, the nose of the wing is going to go down. So let's look at this. I've had this intuition for a while about what's going on with um, my release. Let's clear this out of here. I'm going to zoom in. And this is a really neat, neat bit of information. Even though it's highly pixelated, this is at 980 frames a second. It's probably at about 480p, though, so it's not super high definition. Sorry about that. Don't have that yet. Um, let's look at this. We're going to go back up frame by frame. So let's, let's zoom out here. And I'm going to take you through, here you can see, I chose a clear disc so we could see this. Right there, the pinky and the middle finger, you can see them in the palm because I throw a modified fan grip, looks like this. The pinky pops off there, it's coming off right there. You can actually see the shadow below. That leaves the middle finger on the disc with the index finger, or the ring finger and the middle finger. Here we go, that finger pops off right here initiating the chain of events that's going to slowly snap that disc into a higher spin. And right here, what we're looking at is we have the thumb and the index finger are the last two. These all have popped into the disc, into your palm, and these two are pinching like this. This finger's squeezing on the rim, and the thumb's over the top holding pressure downwards. What happens right here is really cool. Right here we have our thumb, our thumb, is touching there and what we're going to see is a couple frames in the thumb is sliding off at this point the thumb breaks free of the rim and you can see right there the index finger is the last point of contact but the index finger is still under the rim which means in order for the disc to come free the index finger has to open up the disc has to pop upwards a little bit of torque off the index finger and because that's happening Bang, last point of contact is the index finger. One frame there, one frame there. This is, happens still so fast, it's crazy. But with my intuition on this, it tells me that with the finger being the last point of contact, the thumb slides off, the index finger releases, the bottom edge of the disc right here is feeling an upwards torque from the index finger, meaning that the tail goes up because that effect takes place 90 degrees down the chain. The nose goes down ever so slightly. I think, this is an I think, that the disc itself, because my thumb and my index finger 
are rather uniform. And I mean, we're talking about it's such a fraction of a second here that my thumb and index finger release so smoothly within this fraction of a second that that's why there's a little bit less wobble. The other is that I have a pretty straight swing plane. I'll pull up another video here. I'm going to pause this. So let's rewind this backwards. And I want to show that there's a pretty flat swing plane. At least I've worked really hard over the years to try and get a flat swing plane. I do see that I do have, I come inside of my swing and it comes outwards just a little bit. Everybody has a slight bit of rounding. I have a little bit more than I like, so I'll work on that in the future. Um, but let's draw a line here. Let's read this swing plane across here. All right. This comes right through. So from reach back, we have an upwards movement, but it's pretty flat across there on the swing plane. So very little wobble because I think that release point is so fractionally so tight, but I think that index finger imparts a little bit of uh, pressure upwards at the moment of release. Nose goes down ever so slightly. That's my thoughts. Thought I'd share it with you guys.